When Corona came, I dealt with it the only way I thought logically possible. I shut out all my emotions. I detached. When things become too difficult, I have a habit of cutting myself away from my emotions. At some point when I'm stressed or when I'm overwhelmed or when the things get difficult, I deal with it simply by turning the off button. I turn the volume down to zero. I don't hear my emotions. I don't feel my emotions. I don't see my emotions. Instead, what I do is I focus purely on overcoming the situation. So as overwhelmed as I am, as negative as I feel, or as scared or anxious as I might be, I choose to proceed and move forward. And my only thought is the future, the long-term future. Where am I going? Where am I headed? Where do I need to go to get through this difficult situation? Now, the problem with uh, this strategy, this cutting yourself off, is uh, it also um, causes you to feel alienated and isolated. The more I shut down my emotions, the more detached I became, the more alienated I became from my friends and family members. It came to a point where I realized I didn't miss anybody, I didn't feel connected to anybody, I didn't feel anything, I didn't... Uh, it was, I was completely stuck in that uh, detached mode. I was uh, so cut off from myself and from my feelings that I couldn't express or share feelings with other people, and so other people thought I didn't have any feelings. Now, coming out of... Uh, Corona and uh, seeing the vaccines coming uh, into the future horizon and seeing the numbers go down and seeing things open up, it's like I'm picking up the pieces of myself and I realize that I have one year of emotional work I have to get through. I have one year of neglect, of emotional neglect that I have to push through. I know all the pain, all the uh, trauma, all the anxiety, all the stress that I've chosen to ignore, put aside, is now there and it's in my body, it's in my muscles, it's in you know, my actions and everything I do. So uh, I'm literally walking through as a ball of stress, you know, slowly unwinding. Like I can feel myself every day working through some level of anxiety or stress or some negativity or something that I've held on to this whole year something that I've chosen not to process, something that I've chosen to ignore. Now my question is, how can it be that an INFJ, a feeling type, can get so emotionally stuck, you know? I always thought of myself as a feeling person, a person that uh, uh, was very idealistic and was uh, very focused on, you know, helping people and doing good and then um, building, you know, a dream life. I was fiercely idealistic, but for this past year, I've been fiercely pragmatic. I have been uh, focused purely on the practical matters of getting food, of eating on time, of uh, uh, you know taking care of groceries, and of uh, really just staying afloat financially and uh, coming through this uh, turmoil. I've been focused on work, making money, and uh, really anything practical that I think needs to be done to handle and survive throughout this crisis and um, it changed me and it's also changed to other people see me because at some point it gets to the point where uh, my friends my family members and the people around me they start thinking that oh Eric he is a person who doesn't really care about these things he's not really an idealist he is not really a person who cares about anyone or anything he doesn't really have strong values or convictions he doesn't care about the environment or about uh, making the world a better place he doesn't have a heart or he doesn't uh, have the same values that i do ultimately uh, my friends and everyone around me become disconnected from me because they see this person that is just so focused on work and on advancing myself and on getting a better salary and on uh, you know, moving forward on de and dealing with practical chores, cleaning, cooking, you know, all those basic things. They, they see this person that, oh, that's what he's passionate about. Oh, that's what he cares about. Oh, he just wants to uh, sit on the couch. Oh, he just wants to uh, constantly uh, watch TV or not really do anything or work on his uh, a website or learn new skills or 
those things, you know. So uh, people around me, they start doubting who I am and they start questioning, oh, yeah, maybe he was like that all along. Maybe that's who he is, you know. That's just his personality, you know. And uh, it uh, builds a huge disconnect because where I used to connect with people, where I used to feel like, oh, I was able to get super close to others and I was able to uh, really uh, build deep relationships and connect with people both intuitively and emotionally. Now at this point I uh, I feel like, oh, that's actually not happening anymore. That's uh, not really there anymore, you know. So uh, with that said, I think the detach mode, it has its purpose. You know, there's a reason why people use choose to detach, why people choose to cut themselves away from emotions and why, why they do it. It's just a response to difficult emotions and trauma, you know. It's uh, also a way to avoid, you know, uh, constantly being on the floor and crying or constantly uh, feeling anxious or nervous or antsy or constantly uh, feeling worked up. It's uh, a way to stay afloat and stay alive, but it's nothing more than that because it can never get you to, yeah, feel happy or to feel uh, good about yourself or to feel proud or to feel excited about anything. You know, when you're in the detached mode, you neither feel the good nor the bad. You only, you don't feel at all. It's uh, just gray. Everything is just gray. And that's it, you know. Um, I think that throughout this year I've shown an incredible conviction and drive and I can see that, whoa, uh, throughout this time I was able to really get a lot of things done, you know. I was able to get my driver's license, I was able to uh, get a new job, I was able to push myself and improve on myself and work on myself in many ways. And I know that I've done important and necessary things this year. I've uh, worked through things that I knew that I would have to work through eventually that I was uh, uh, ignoring and avoiding because I was so focused on, you know, uh, more idealistic things, travel, living life, enjoying life, you know, all those things that I normally do. But I also know that there was like, an intense price uh, to all that work and to all that stress and that I'm paying that price now. And now the honest truth is I'm in recovery mode. I'm landing from uh, what's like being um, at uh, a working camp for the last year, you know. Uh, I'm recentering, recovering, picking up the pieces from uh, feeling uh, completely lost and completely scrambled and completely uh, messed up uh, by this entire year. So, yeah, what I want to tell you is be careful with the detach mode and be careful with cutting yourself off from your emotions, especially for a longer time. Especially, uh, honestly, I don't know if it's a wise strategy to cut off yourself off of your emotions uh, at all, honestly. And I wonder if uh, there's ever a time where it's a good thing to do. I think it's often, it's just a thing to do. It's a strategy. It's a defense mechanism. It's not the necessarily a healthy strategy or a way to be a healthy person. Now, perhaps there was no way to be a healthy person this year. Perhaps there was no way to come out of this year without any form of psychological harm or any form of uh, difficulty. And I mean, I think most of us struggle no matter what we chose to do or how we chose to deal with it. It's not like uh, you are 100% in control of everything you experience and everything you feel. And I think some things are unfair in that sense. Like they... There are things that just happen to you that you can't really do anything about. Although there's, there are things in life that you can't stop or prevent or change. Just uh, Sure, you can work on your attitude and you can work on trying to deal with it as good as possible. But there is never a perfect way to deal with those situations. There is, honestly, there is um, just a lot of imperfect ways of dealing with those situations. And so I think uh, we should really spend... Um, uh, this uh, coming time, you know, with the world opening up again and with changes happening, really just reconnecting with each other and with ourselves. Really take the time to appreciate your friendships, to uh, listen to your emotions, to reflect on and to deal with, you know, the experiences that you had this last year and to really recollect yourself. 
work on finding your way back and uh, finding your way back to a new normal or a happy, healthy normal. And uh, uh, of course, don't forget to take care of the other people around you either, because I think a lot of people are struggling. And I've seen that uh, uh, mental illness has really gone up this year. And I can see that people are more anxious than usual. And I can see that people are really struggling, you know. Uh, I am just following social media, you know, I'm constantly hit by that, just oh, this, um, that I'm seeing that my friends are not okay, and they're not doing well, and they're not happy, and they're not good, and so I think uh, also give yourself some time to process through that, because I don't think you're now magically going to push an on switch, and everything's going to be great, and you're going to be happy again, and everything's going to be good. I think it's going to take time to recover, just like it would take time to recover from any negative or traumatic experience. So give yourself the time to recover and to take the days one day at a time. That's my advice for you. And yeah, once again, the INFJ detach mode. I don't know if it's healthy. What do you guys think? Feel free to leave your experiences in the comments down below. And thank you all for watching.